Hi, this is Dr. J. Welcome to Educational Research. That's a massive course. It's a huge course. We have a lot of stuff to do, but uh, if we do them together one by one, I'm sure we will come up on top. First webcam, first response to, to the webcam. Um, during uh, the first uh, session, we have to prepare for our research project. First of all, the introduction, the, uh, the title page, the introduction, and the research problem. Let's talk about the research problem. What are the characteristics of a good research problem? What is a research problem? Where is the problem? Let's go on page 51 of our book and let's read the characteristics. There are five. The first one, the problem has to be significant. The problem has to be meaningful. It has to mean something to education. There got to be a problem there in the educational realm. Number two, the problem has to be one that leads to further research. It has to be a problem that can be the stepstone for other researchers to research upon. It doesn't have to be finite. The third one, the problem has to be researchable. You need to have uh, data, you need to, uh, you need to be able to, uh, to research it. Number four, it has to be suitable. It has to suit you, your skill, your way of being, your time, your experience. The problem, in other words, has to fit your interest, has to fit you. And the problem, obviously, has to be ethical. It has to be an ethical problem. Five characteristics. Let me read you something. The statement of the problem that I wrote for one of my papers, and, uh, and I will email it to you as well. And you have to tell me, does the problem that I'm reading you, does he have these five characteristics or not? Identify them and tell me, why he has them or he does not have them. I will start just to read a couple of sentences. Educational institutions, particularly in higher learning, are facing complex problems and challenges. Since the early 80s, liberal and communitarian philosophy have presented a panorama of educational models. The models of teaching and learning that have emerged from modernism, postmodernism, and post structuralism have complicated and controversial educational ramifications. Contemporary universities face an ongoing struggle for stability, credibility, and operability. Arguably, the discourse concerning models of teaching and learning raises issues that must be addressed theoretically and practically. The first, we start with a problem. The first is a teaching and learning model that integrates a learner's study and life. As evidenced in a last impact beyond the defined educational moment, such model connects multiple dimensions. The Enlightenment paradigm, which placed reason at the center of intellectual discourse, shaped education itself, as well as models of teaching and learning. Scientific reasoning became the means and the end to educational process. Learners were valued exclusively for their ability to reason, to retain information and to process it mentally. Such an educational philosophy led to positive technological and academic achievement. However, it also reinforced a dichotomy with learners, a division between reason and heart, between mind and body. Such a dichotomy tends to reduce the educative process to one simple dimension, the intellectual, at the expense of the experiential, spiritual, ethical and emotional. Is that true? Is this a problem in education? Did the Enlightenment really influence education and focus only on the intellectual dimension? Are the other dimensions uh, the Cinderella's 
of education. Please, I want to know what you think. Take care and uh, call me if you need anything or email me. I'm here for you. Bye-bye.